Skiing is an old sport that has been around for centuries. However, in comparison to other sports, it is fairly new. Skiing has drastically changed throughout the years, rising from its previous obscurity from its modern development in Norway. The sport has become widespread with a variety of offshoots to the original sport. These are things such as snowboarding, which is the biggest change, downhill skiing, cross-country skiing, and many more. In my opinion, this rapid change in the sport needs to be explored more deeply. Let's start off by seeing what people know about the sport. Not much. Absolutely nothing. I know nothing. I know nothing about ski history. Now that I know that most people who ski do not know anything about the sport, I decided to investigate this further. I first decided to travel to Franconia, New Hampshire to talk with the executive director of the New England Ski Museum, Jeff Leach, to find out more about the origins of skiing and its major changes that increased its popularity as a sport. They've actually found uh, in, in uh, peat bogs, which preserves wood over in Scandinavia and Russia, you know, they found little fragments of skis and some of them have, you know, were, were kind of maybe this long and this wide. Um, we have a pair over here that uh, uh, over in the uh, Altai Mountains of Central Asia, people are still making and skiing on that are, you know, about head high and maybe about this wide with uh, uh, kind of rawhide bindings and animal skins on the bottom so that they can climb uphill on them without slipping back. Next, Leach goes into how skiing affected some aspects of World War I and later the warfare in World War II, which impacted the U.S. Army as well. really know what happened in the, in the old, old days, you know, but um, in, the, um, in World War I, all the uh, European troops all had, all the European armies had ski troops and mountain troops that, uh, you know, while there was a lot of focus on the Western Front in World War I, there was the Southern Front, there was the, the Alpine Front between Italy and Austria, and uh, those, those troops that faced off against each other were all uh, mountain troops. Uh, they didn't so much ski as they were, they were mountaineers. And there were big battles there that, that no one in the U.S. really sort of remembers these days. But um, the, uh, and then having seen that, um, I guess the one really big effect that, that uh, I'm aware of that uh, uh, ski troops had on, on military history it was in Finland in the, the 1940 war when Russia invaded Finland in, in the winter and Finland was able to uh, guerrilla warfare using guerrilla warfare with ski troops was able, able to hold off this Russian juggernaut of uh, mechanized uh, armies for three months or so. That uh, Seeing that, skiers in the U.S. Said, uh, convinced our War Department to uh, uh, start a regiment and then a division of mountain trained skiers called the 10th Mountain Division that fought in, that were trained and fought in World War II but never really fought on skis. But it was the, you know, their high altitude training and their mountaineering experience that led them to be very successful in combat. You know, when, once things started really turning into a sport in, uh, in Norway, the skis sort of became, uh, the, the, the form kind of uh, stayed steady for almost uh, 100 years. And that was a, uh, you know, something along the lines of, uh, well, I guess that's a little long, but uh, there'd be a, uh, you know, a tip, a tail, and a, a little bit narrower waist than the tip and the tail, so they'd turn slightly um, and then in the, uh, that, that became refined in the 1920s and 1930s. Steel edges got put on, you know, the, the bindings went from a, just a simple toe strap uh, into a, you know, a metal contraption that would hold the boot better. But there's been a whole evolution of, of skis. Well, the skis have changed a lot since I first started skiing. They've come to a shaped ski instead of a long straight ski which it allows people to turn a lot easier and it's, it's a really great feature. It's really helped everyone skiing a lot. It makes it a lot easier to learn and a lot easier to teach. Well, the, inst the instruction is basically the same that it's been for many years, except for now the tips have changed and some of the sayings that, they, that instructors do with children and, and, and older skiers to help them be more confident. So it's, they've come a long way in actually helping, helping skiers enjoy the sport. I visited the Cross Saber Ski Shop in Rainham, Massachusetts and talked with the owner, Tom Phelps, and he gave me more insight in why skiing has changed, the, difference, the differences in type of skiing, and where it will go in the future. Any sport, including skiing, if you can make it easier and more enjoyable for the consumer, 
it makes it more fun. Yeah. And they don't have to practice as much to get good at it. There was a time when skiing was getting popular in the 1920s where it was kind of a little cult and, and everybody that was really a committed skier almost knew each other. Legion Old Ferry then talked about the culture of skiing since it first came popular to how it is now. There is, you know, there, the, the culture has expanded and proliferated as different kinds of skis uh, took, uh, came along, you know, cross country skiing, uh, and what we call alpine skiing now, lift serve, downhill skiing, um, you know, we're sort of the two, and, and ski jumping were sort of the two forms in the, in the 1930s, and that's just expanded so rapidly into freestyle and park skiing and backcountry skiing, uh, alpine touring, that, and e each one of these little skiing disciplines kind of creates its own culture. When I first moved up here, there was a lot of partying going on, so I mean, a lot of the ski crowd would, you know, go to the bars afterwards and enjoy happy hours and things and such, but since then, it's become more of a family sport. So I believe it's changed a lot. And now with the snowboarders on the scene, that seems like they have a style of their own. There's a lot of different types of skis and snowboards, and Phelps helps to break down each and every single type and what they're used for. Downhill skis are uh, primarily for those, those who ski at on prepared areas of mountains. So you're working with gravity. Gravity is doing the work, the lift takes you up. Cross country skis are where they're much lighter and you have to provide the propulsion to get from A to B and so the skis not only have to slide on the snow they also have to stick to the snow so that you can make it up a hill. Um, backcountry skis are kind of a cross between those two between cross country and, and regular downhill skis because sometimes people will climb or skin up an area and then they take the skins off and they ski down in areas with gravity so freestyle skis are generally for either bump skiing or doing park and pipe and those flexes are much different. They're generally narrower because they're not skiing in ungroomed snow. And uh, so they have to be very durable because of the extreme loads that are put on the, the product for uh, either bump skiing or freestyle park and pipe skiing. Our, there's um, snowboards, which most people want called, generically called all mountain boards. So you can ski in the park and pipe a little bit. You can just free ride if you want to go out where it's ungroomed in the woods. But they do make specific boards for carving, which is almost like downhill skiing on a snowboard. They also have special boots uh, for that. Freestyle is also, if you see on the TV, even the X Games and all that sort of thing, those boards are made specifically for park and pipe. Different flex patterns, very durable. And then most people have kind of an all-around board because they like to do a little bit of everything. Well, snow, really, I think, uh, two major impacts uh, of snowboarding on skiing. The, uh, one of them was that uh, snowboards, when, when they came along, had, a, had a, a more of a shape like this than skis did. And, the, um, and you know, the ski manufacturers always knew that this would probably be a better turning uh, profile, but uh, they hesitated to go to the expense of changing all their molds when none of their competitors were. But as, as snowboarding became popular and people realized the ease of turning a snowboard because of its deep radius, uh, the ski companies pretty much had to follow suit. So that's one, the, the, the snowboard uh, revolution had a big impact on the, on the shape of skis. Also, it was a time in the, uh, you know, say the, the mid to late 1980s when baby boomers who had been the bulk of the, uh, the ski industries, uh, ski resorts, customers in the in the 60s and 70s were getting older and having families not skiing as much and then along came a new cohort of uh, snowboarding enthusiasts who uh, kind of took up some of the slack at the at the ski areas at a time when their ticket sales without the snowboarding population probably would have tailed off uh, somewhat dramatically so uh, very very important for for the ski business well, it's certainly made a, a big difference over the years because now the uh, mountain is probably 50-50. When I first started, well, there were no, no snowboarders at first, and then uh, they just started coming and coming, and now they're just as, they're out there. I never tried it, though. Many of my friends made the switch, and they, and they love it. Jeff Leach shares his opinions on the impact snowboarding had on skiing. Oh, it's absolutely positive. 
you know, and, you know, there was a little bit of uh, friction between the two groups early on, but that's pretty much ended by now. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do both. So uh, I think it's very, all those impacts I talked about are very positive for skiing. He then describes the conflicts between skiers and snowboarders and the resolution. Probably a little bit of a generational uh, clash. Uh, you know, snowboarders were, um, uh, at, at first some ski areas, uh, really denied them access because you know they they got focused on whether there was a a safety strap which skis used to have to have with uh, before ski brakes came along and they uh, you, you know there was kind of a, a real conservative um, hesitation to accept snowboarding and and that's you know I think that was probably going on into the 1990s but uh, some areas um, uh, Donner Pass in California, Stratton in uh, uh, Vermont, and Cannon right here were very, very early acceptors of, of snowboarding uh, populations. Recently there has not been many major trends in skiing, however, Phelps talked about some trends that have occurred in the past. It was a very big trend about 15 years ago. Snowboarding was very, very popular. Everybody was trying it because it was the new thing, so to speak. It actually has been around for 25, 30 years. But it really caught on, so that bubble has come and gone. Now it's kind of plateaued, so it's a steady, um, uh, stable population of snowboard skiers. We found it went down a little bit with, as snowboard rose, but now it's kind of balanced out, especially with the advent of the wider skis and twin tip skis, because a lot of those skiers who are more adventurous in the woods and liking to do things in park and pipe that they only used to do on snowboards, now they do it on skis. So that is kind of leveled out. Phelps describes the most recent changes in ski equipment. Um, both in what we call rocker and the side cut of the ski and snowboard. And it just makes it easier to use. Uh, boots have become lighter and generally more comfortable. And bindings have become more consistent in their release. Except for snowboards, of course, they don't release. Even though we cannot truly know how skiing and snowboarding will change in the future, Tom Phillips attempts to give his opinion on how the sport will change in the future. Every year we keep saying, what can they do to make it even better? They always come up with something. It's primarily, I think, it's going to be more materials and trying to make the gear lighter and lighter. Um, you never know, they may come up with something with electronics or something like that in bindings, but uh, there is some uh, work with vibration using electronics to help cut vibration in products such as skis and snowboards. Of course, heated boots, heated jackets, that's an, another um, avenue that will change with technology. But the actual gear itself, I think it's primarily going to be materials and make them lighter.